Hi everyone. It is May 12, 2019. I just want to say that I agree with those who have been leaving comments saying that they are really trying to shove down Americans' faces that climate change, global warming is real. Well, that's one aspect of what is happening with all of this flooding. And yes, there was more flooding over the last 12, uh, 24 hours. I am really dismayed that an awful lot of people are still claiming that this is climate change, global warming. I will get to an article where someone in New Orleans believes in climate change. But fortunately, some Americans are saying, wait a second here. Okay, uh, we're getting flooded repeatedly and the cities haven't done any work on the drainage, the sewage, uh, the, the sewers. I do think that sewers are being closed to create a whole lot of this flooding. This is New Orleans. This was, and all of this was posted today. Well, heavy rain this weekend caused some severe flooding across southern Louisiana, including in New Orleans. Take a look. More than two inches fell just this morning. Left a lot of drivers stranded on the streets there. The city says the rain came down so fast it overwhelmed the sewer system as well. Overwhelmed the sewer well, heavy rain system. Okay, look. Please. Please. Get that something is very wrong here. If it was climate change, global warming, it would come about incrementally. I have been saying that. Well, for now, all of the flash flooding that was occurring last year, um, why aren't people getting that? Why? This is radical change. And all one needs to do is do some research on weather modification and geoengineering to understand what is happening and that weather is being used as a weapon a weapon, which means weapons, you know, they destroy lives, a lot of lives, a lot of lives of lives have been destroyed just in the last, well, six weeks. New Orleans, New Orleans, New Orleans. So I've been reading articles. You've had two to eight inches that fell overnight. Really? Well, I don't even know if that calculation is an accurate calculation because they can create an awful lot of this flooding from closing off the sewers, releasing waters, water from uh, the sewer. Okay, Mississippi. Residents flooded out of homes in Pearl River and Stone counties overnight. This was at 12, um, this was today on the 12th at 6.25 a.m. Saturday's flash flooding devastated the lives of Pearl River and Stone County residents within minutes. I've never seen water come up this fast at all. I mean, it's scary. As you see, we have a great big lake in our yard and all of our trailers are underwater. We have people that are trapped in their homes. They didn't realize it, but they just opened the door and there's nowhere to go. One Pearl River County family arrived at the shelter for help after a flood wiped out their apartment. I pretty much lost everything at this point. We had historic rains during Hurricane Isaac, but I didn't see quite the damage then that I'm seeing now. For many, the comfort of their tight-knit communities have been washed away. And this posted 12 hours later Flooding continues at Pearl River County. 
Tonight could bring more rescues in Pearl River County. Joyce Philippe joins us live from Picayune tonight. Joyce. Now, Mike, when you have flash flooding, a lot of the time that water travels and it moves with the current of the river or the creek that it's connected to. And that's what we're seeing here in Picayune tonight. Multiple teams from across the state are setting up in this area, expecting the flood off flood runoff from yesterday to come down here into Picayune and southern parts of Pearl River County and cause some major issues. Yesterday, emergency crews performed 20 rescues in the county, many of which they say were life-saving. Emergency Management Director Danny Manley says with situations like this, it's better to be safe than sorry, especially when bodies of water are reaching record highs. The Hobolichito Creek, or as we call it, Bully, is getting ready to or crested at 24 feet and uh, that's we haven't seen that since 2012 which was Hurricane Isaac. Tonight Manley says that there will either be a lot of damage to the roads and water rescues performed like yesterday or none at all. It's really or none at all. Are you listening to these reporters and meteorologists who well there could be a lot of damage or none at all or we could have more storms or we're not going to have any more storms. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, the reporting on the weather has been, yeah, it's, uh, how is it that Americans are listening to this reporting and not getting how, well, how different it is today? Now, getting back to New Orleans, slammed with heavy rains, flooding streets, inundated, uh, stranding cars, temporarily shutting down all public streetcar and bus services. Four inches of rain fell across the city. Um, 11,500 residents without power. I'm up to my kneecaps in water. That comes from Heather Wright, 48, a longtime resident or a lifelong resident. In fact, generational resident. I'm a sixth generational New Orleanian. <laughs> it used to be that every few, few years we'd get these big floods in May. Now it's constant. Anytime there's major rain, we stress. It's becoming an issue where people are literally afraid when thunderstorms come. We don't know if the streets are going to become impassable, if water is going to enter our homes or businesses. Right, here's more friends talking about moving further outside the city or leaving New Orleans. Living here is like a being in a bad marriage. You want to stay because there are times that are good. Uh, then there are other times when it's so, so bad, but you don't know how to leave. This city has become so dysfunctional. Okay. River flooding may continue into June as floodwaters in rivers further north travel southward and add on to the oncoming flooding along the lower Mississippi. On Friday, the river rose so rapidly, six inches in 24 hours, that the Army Corps of Engineers opened the, um, the Bonnie Carey Spillway about 12 miles west of New Orleans. This flooding is ridiculous, another resident of New Orleans said, New Orleans, you have to do better with your drainage pipes. This is absolutely horrible. People's cars are going underwater. This is ridiculous. Come on now, people. This is happening all over our country. It's been happening all over our country. Uh, and I noticed the start of January 2018 and I have videos on my playlist, U.S. Flooding, that prove that, well, kind of the mid area of our country from north to south, and then all of the hurricanes, the coastal areas, right, the, uh, she's a sixth generation New Orleans, and forget about it. Uh, she believes in climate change, but says the flooding problems in her city go beyond science. 
All right, that's part of the problem. Another part of the problem is people believing in climate change. You want to believe in climate change? You don't want to do any research on weather modification, geoengineering. You know, when I read that, uh, it reminded me of this article that I read. Earth Day 2019, 50 years of apocalyptic global warming predictions and why people believe them, part one. Good article. But I want to read what Beto O'Rourke said just recently. Presidential hopeful Beto O'Rourke said this. This is the final chance. The scientists are absolutely unanimous on this. My God. I don't... There are far more scientists that dispute the global warming climate change uh, hysteria than there are scientists who believe it. These lies coming out of these people. See, stating a lie like that, Beto O'Rourke should have been thrown under the bus just by stating that lie. But more people believe the lie. And they're hanging on to it. You know, when you mention geoengineering, weather modification, you might want to take a look at it and you get hostile responses. You know something's happening in that human being, in that individual. They don't want to. They're either scared to or it's just going to create way too much cognitive dissonance and it might mean they have to change something about their lifestyle. But a whole lot of people, and I get it in the comment section from you guys, you're laughed at, you're called crazy, um, friends are disappearing, family is disappearing. I don't know what it is about Americans in that they can't just take a look at something but they sure as hell have proven time and time again that they can. Um, you know, you want to listen. He went on to say, actually, uh, that we have no more than 12 years <laughs> to take incredibly bold action on this crisis. Not to be melodramatic, but the future of the world depends on us right now. Here, where we are. Passing the lie. Green New Deal. People have no clue what is coming to them. Um, they're going off of the intergovernmental panel on climate change, United Nations, their last assessment, and also the national assessment coming out of our executive office, and Trump never changed the scientists. He used Obama's scientists. Yeah. All right. Well, they have been saying the same thing. Let me read some of the quotes from Earth Day 1970. Civilization will end within 15 or 30 years unless immediate action is taken against problems facing mankind. Harvard biologist George Wald. It is already too late to avoid mass starvation. Dennis Hayes, chief organizer for Earth Day. We are in an environmental crisis which threatens the survival of this nation and of the world as a suitable place of human habitation. Washington University biologist Barry Commoner. Population will inevitably and completely outstrip whatever small increases in food supplies we make. Most of the people who are going to die in the greatest cataclysm in the history of man have already been born. By 1975, some experts feel that food shortages will have escalated 
the present level of world hunger and starvation into famines of unbelievable proportions. Stafford, um, Stanford, sorry, Stanford University biologist Paul Ehrlich. Demographers agree almost unanimously on the following grim timetable. By 1975, widespread famines will begin in India. These will spread by 1990 to include all of India, Pakistan, China, and the Near East, Africa. By the year 2000, or conceivably sooner, South and Central America will exist under famine conditions. By the year 2000, 30 years from now, the entire world, with the exception of Western Europe, North America, and Australia, will be in famine. Peter Gunter, a North Texas State University professor, in a decade, urban dwellers will have to wear gas masks to survive air pollution. By 1985, air pollution will have reduced the amount of sunlight reaching Earth by one half that coming from Life magazine. At the present rate of nitrogen buildup, it's only a matter of time before light will be filtered out of the atmosphere. This guy probably knew about geoengineering. Oh yes, those contrails that Oh, persistent. We call them now persistent contrails that stay. They don't dissipate. Oh, and they spread out and block the sun. Yes, geoengineering filters out the sun. Um, yeah, filtered out of the atmosphere and none of our land will be usable by the year 2000. If present trends continue, we will be using up crude oil at such a rate that there won't be any more crude oil. You'll drive up to the pump and say, fill her up, buddy. And he'll say, I am very sorry. There isn't any. The world has been chilling sharply. Wait a second. Uh, in 1970, it was global warming. Okay, well, oh, Kenneth Watt, maybe you just got uh, the script wrong. I don't know. At this Earth Day, 1970, uh, it will be chilling sharply for about 20 years. If present trends continue, the world will be about four degrees colder for the global mean temperature in 1990, but even degrees colder in the year 2000, oh, 11 degrees, I'm sorry, 11 degrees colder in the year 2000. This is about twice what it would take to put us into an ice age. Wow, okay. Read on. Very interesting. Uh, they've been saying the same thing over and over and over again, but because it's a lie, well, they have to bring about the unusual or unusual, Jesus, unusable land. This is Kansas. This is an area of Kansas that I haven't shown at all in any of the videos.
So do you think a lot of farmland has been wiped out this year? And that it, it, this kind of flooding, these farms saturated with a whole lot of area that the waters are just not receding, unusable farmland created by man using weather as a weapon. Um, Bringing, bringing weather, weather news overnight, overnight and, and it affects millions, millions of people. people. Yeah, and take a look at these images here coming in. Daring, daring rescues overnight across the American, American South, more than a foot of rain falling in Mississippi, Mississippi prompting a flash flood emergency. And there is more trouble on the way. Severe storms possible today from Alabama to Virginia. And in fact, the flash flooding threat extends through Monday along the East Coast. So let's go right to Rob with the latest. Good morning, Rob. Good morning, Eva. This system moving painfully slow, although these cells are moving quickly. They're kind of running, running over the same area, area and, and we, we call, call that training. training. So when you get that happening, two to two and a half inches of rain per hour, that's not a good thing. We've got aerial flood warnings and flash flood warnings from Hattiesburg to Biloxi, a new one over New Orleans, and this rain is falling over saturated ground. And when you get that, that happening, well, really it's just a 12 hour period, the results are not good. And now they're talking about massive um, storms, torrential rains coming up the East Coast. Training. This guy said training, this is training. You see all these cells and uh, they're moving fast, but the storm is moving slow. How does this guy sleep at night? Yes, I understand that meteorologists, they have to sign their confidentiality agreements, but <laughs> most Americans now are having to sign confidentiality confidentiality agreements. I just, I, 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 I often wonder how people can, can live off a lie, make their money off a lie, and watch so many people get destroyed and never tell the truth. I don't, this is not a human being I will ever understand. Okay, so they're talking about these storms coming up the East Coast. Wow, all right, well, so, well, we have a straight edge storm, thousand plus miles, once again, Gulf of Mexico on into Canada, really? Okay, we have a lot of weird things happening tonight, as you can see. Well, what's our jet stream doing here and here? We're going to look at it, look at it on radar. All right, this is the satellite, and I'm going to show you radar on the same site, College of DuPage. You see the high frequency heating in the Gulf, in the Atlantic, and there they have been forecasting flooding events along the East Coast. All right, so let's go to radar. Wow, very different picture here. Hmm. Now radar picks up precipitation. As you are seeing, it's picking up bits of precipitation here. So I don't understand. All right. Uh, some claim that you can Photoshop satellite, but you can't Photoshop radar. I have to wonder, are they, are they, is the satellite images posted for the weather terrorists? Okay, this is what they want us to do. Jim, let's get to it. Let's start that high frequency heating and create torrential downpours along the East Coast to match the images that they have posted for us on satellite because it's not on radar. All right. So into Monday, we're supposed to be having these storms. Where are they? All right. This blob in the Gulf is, well, it's just disappearing once it gets hits land in Florida. This is going out into the Atlantic 
and so is this storm right up here. So I don't know where the storm is coming from, unless, of course, they create it. You like that straight-edged line right there? That storm? All right, we have very strange things happening. Let's do the sub-regional. Let's go on up here to Illinois. Are they creating another Lando cane? Um, I can't remember that term that they were using with these like twisters or these uh, hurricanes on land. What was that term? My memory is going. But something is very wrong with our jet stream. This is going northeast. This the more intense storm appears to want to go northeast, but something is holding it down and bringing it around. Now it goes south. This is not the way our jet stream ever operated before. So man is creating an awful lot of disruption in the natural processes, which is not good for any of us, not good for life itself. Look at our next red Doppler radar stations blasting away. All right, well, we also have it down in Arizona, Texas, uh, New Mexico, uh, what is going on down here? Wow, well, we've got our, these um, perfect circular lines right here, Doppler radar working, but we've got storms going into Texas. They're, you know, going eastwardly. Uh, this seems to want to go east right down here in Mexico, but it seems to be driven back into New Mexico. Um, but now, well, here, New Mexico, we've got, uh, you know, these bulbs of precipitation heading into Texas from New Mexico, but we have now the jet stream, well, taking it split in half and it's now going west, right on down into Arizona. Okay, well, are they trying to produce yet another one of those. What did they call it? What was the term? It was up in Kansas. I posted videos. I use that term so often I can't remember. You know, the land of Cain. Not a hurricane. It's a hurricane on land. All right. What you're looking at is severe disruption in the natural processes. Man has so well, taken over, and yeah, it's not good news <laughs> at all. So, they may very well get that storm. It, it, we could wake up in a couple of hours and see a whole lot of precipitation created on the East Coast. It's hard, guys. Eight years research, posting facts, evidence, and it really has amounted to nothing because the narrative, when Americans don't challenge the lies that they are hearing, the lies win. 
So, yeah, my playlist, uh, Global Warming, Climate Change, Nonsense. Um, I've posted a lot of videos, quotes of scientists who dispute global warming. Wow, so Beto O'Rourke, you claim that scientists are unanimous? Are you kidding? This is a disgusting liar. Um, how do we get rid of the liars? I guess we don't. We just have to stomach them and watch all of this destruction. Yeah, quotes of scientists. And, well, it's an hour and six minutes, so I read a lot of quotes from different scientists, experts. Oh, Nobel laureates. Oh, also former IPCC members. Uh, mainstream media global warming hysteria explodes dangerous ramifications for all when lies are believed. A couple of months ago, IPCC comes out with their uh, assessment, national the National Science uh, out of the executive office. Our national assessment comes out about a month later. And they're pretty much um, the same. We're going to die in 12 years if we don't do something radically different to, to just make these radical changes, which is going to so destroy most Americans. They have no clue what is coming to them. Their belief in this lie, the consequences to them, they have no clue, but it is coming. It's going to be very costly to each individual. Certainly, if they get that Green New Deal going. <sighs> Despite evidence, climate change lie continues. And why did Trump keep Obama scientists? Yeah. Facts, evidence, um, I, I can't go through it every video. They're on my channel. Compilation of scientists speak truth regarding global warming. It's fraud, data manipulation, not science. And... Here they are. Judith Curry, um, Nobel laureates. We've got, oh my God, it, it just, it just never ends. It just never ends. <laughs> so much evidence and we still can't get through to people. All right. Um, part one, climate change lie, the basis of Agenda 2030, sustainability, it must be stopped. Yep, here is a video that uh, the IPCC assessments along with the national assessment. Scientists say after they review it, this is only worthy of the nearest garbage can. Immature, careless doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Nothing matters. When you have a degraded, demoralized population, you can, you can have these scientists on the IPCC come out and say, ha ha, we fooled you. It was all just a lie, but we made a lot of money. And they would just go on. Americans would just go on not even caring. All right, I'm going to play a few minutes of this documentary. All links are below. Uh, hey, what's your name? Write your uh, full name here. Six generations in New Orleans. You believe in climate change. All right, well, Heather Wright, please. Please consider that it's not climate change. Something else is happening. It's called weather modification. Yes, man, with this technology, can create that flooding that you have to deal with over and over again. 
Man is doing it. Not Mother Nature. I have a playlist. Weather modification. That's the name of it on my channel. <laughs> well, all links are below. More flooding is coming. More homes destroyed. Businesses destroyed. I've often heard it said that there is a consensus of thousands of scientists on the global warming issue and that humans are causing a catastrophic change to the climate system. Well, I am one scientist and there are many that simply think that is not true. Man-made global warming is no ordinary scientific theory. This morning the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change made up It is presented in the media as having the stamp of authority of an impressive international organization. The United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or IPCC. The IPCC, like any UN body, is political. The final conclusions are politically driven. This claim that the IPCC is the world's top 1,500 or 2,500 uh, scientists, you look at the bibliographies of the people and it's simply not true. There are quite a number of non-scientists and to build the number up to 2,500 they have to start taking reviewers and government people and so on, anyone who ever came close to them. And none of them are asked to agree. Many, Many of them, them disagree. disagree. Those, Those people who are specialists, are specialists but don't, don't agree with the polemic and resign. And there have been a number that I know of. Uh, uh, they, they are simply put, put on the author, author list and become, and become part, part of this 2,500 of the world's top scientists. People, people have decided you have, you have to convince other people that since no scientist disagrees, you shouldn't disagree either. But whenever you hear that, that's pure propaganda. This is the story of how a theory about climate turned into a political ideology. See, I don't even like to call it the environmental movement anymore because really it is a political activist movement. And they have become hugely influential at a global level. It is the story of the distortion of a whole area of science. Climate, climate scientists, scientists need, need there to be a problem in order to get funding. We have, we have a vested, vested interest in creating panic because then money will flow to climate science. There's one thing you shouldn't say, and that is this might not be a problem. Okay, I will link below to everything. Uh, I just... I have a funny feeling. I am feeling and thinking what a whole lot of you are feeling and thinking. 